Hello students, welcome. Previously, lesson 9, from 2 to big 3, we were dealing with the oxides of elements in bureau 3, which we have explained in terms of structure and bonding. Then today, we want to proceed to the second, that's chlorides of elements in bureau 3, and we want to explain in terms of structure and bonding. We are saying most elements of bureau 3 form stable chlorides. And we are going to start sodium chloride and magnesium chloride. They register a small change in temperature when dissolved in water to form neutral solutions like sodium chloride solution and magnesium chloride solution, respectively. We are saying next they are also ionic and therefore they are expected to dissolve fully into ions. So next we are going to go to aluminium chloride and we are saying anhydrous aluminium chloride exist in a molecular form and it pairs to form a dime. So dime aluminium chloride is written Al2Cl6. The aluminium chloride molecule pair through coordinate or dative bond. So if you remember we write aluminium chloride AlCl3. When we add another AlCl3 what we are going to get will be Al2Cl6. That's how the formula of dimer aluminum chloride will look like. Next now, let's know how dimer aluminum chloride look like. So we're having aluminum chloride molecule here, another aluminum chloride molecule. So when they combine or when they react to form the dimer aluminum chloride, this is how it will be looking like. So we're having here two coordinate bonds. One is here, check the arrow, and the other one is here. The other bonds are just covalent bonds. When we have a bond between aluminum and chlorine in one molecule, the type of bond there is covalent bond. But when we're having chlorine of one molecule combining with aluminum of another molecule, there we are going to have coordinate bond or dative bond. So let's use dots and cross diagram to show dimer aluminum chloride. So this is how it will look like. So we're having one aluminum bonding to three chlorine like this. This is another aluminum linking to three, three chlorine. So where will the dative bond come from? The dative bond will come from the way you see here. It is this chlorine combining with aluminum. So here it is this chlorine combining with aluminum and the two electrons that will be shared contributed by chlorine. The way you see here, these are two dots and dots are given by chlorine. So the other coordinate bond, the way you see it is chlorine of the first, di uh, of the first aluminum chloride, which is here reacting or combining with that side of aluminum here. So that means the coordinate bond or the second dative bond is here and the two electrons to be shared is contributed by only one, one of the elements forming the bond. And that's chlorine. So this is how the structure of dimer alu aluminum chloride looks like when we use dots and crosses. Next, we're saying aluminum chloride is hydrolyzed by water to form an acidic solution with a pH of 3 and it therefore behaves as covalent rather than ionic chloride. So, we are saying here aluminum chloride, when you see aluminum chloride the way it is written, it's written like this and when we check now the elements that it's made up of is aluminium and also chlorine. Aluminium is a metal and also chlorine is not metal. So we'd expect the type of bond to be ionic bond. But we're saying aluminium chloride is more of covalent rather than ionic. The reason why it's more of covalent is that because aluminium chloride will be hydrolyzed by water to form acidic solutions. So it will be behaving as covalent chloride rather than ionic chloride and we're saying the acidic solution is as a result of hydrolysis when molecular chlorides dissolve in water a lot of heat is produced as a result of hydrolysis then we're having all the other chlorides 
hydrolyzing water and what's that breaking down some substance in water eg or for example we have this silicon for chloride which is a molecular substance will dissolve in water to form silicon peroxide and also four moles of hydrochloric acid solution here next we're having aluminium chloride which will be hydrolyzed in water to form aluminium hydroxide and also three moles of hydrochloric acid next we're having here phosphorus three chloride reacting with water to form phosphoric three acid and also hydrochloric acid next we're having phosphorus five chloride reacting with water giving us phosphoric five acid and also hydrochloric acid so next what is hydrolysis reaction we are saying it's a reaction which involves breaking down of substance by water and we're saying molecular chlorides undergo hydrolysis or hydrolysis reaction lastly let's go and see this table here showing the chlorides of elements in biology the chlorides include sodium chloride magnesium chloride aluminium chloride silicon four chloride we're having phosphorus 5 chloride and we're having sulfur chloride. So the physical state, we're having solid, solid, solid. They are liquid and sulfur chloride is a gas. So the belt and the boiling point is as shown here. Then the type of structure will be giant ionic, giant ionic. Aluminium chloride will be molecular. That's the type of structure. It is dimer aluminium chloride. Then we have the molecular, molecular, molecular structures. And the type of bond will be ionic bonding, ionic bonding, and this dimer aluminium chloride will be having covalent bonding with dative bonding. Then the type of bond that we have there, we can just see it's more of covalent rather than ionic. Then when we go to silicon four chloride and the rest, they're having covalent, covalent, covalent bonding. Then when we check the pH of the solution, sodium chloride and magnesium chloride, they form neutral solutions, therefore they are going to have a pH of 7. But dime aluminium chloride and the rest, they are going to have a pH of 3 because they are hydrolyzed in water to form acidic solutions. When we go and see effect on water, sodium chloride and magnesium chloride, they will be dissolved in water to form neutral solutions. Then we are having aluminium chloride hydrolyzing in water and the other acidic chlorides or non-metal chlorides or molecular chlorides they will be hydrolyzed in water to form acidic solutions so lastly let's go to the summary of the characteristics of bonds so we are going to start with covalent bonding here we're having ionic bonding then we're having metallic bonding Let's start with their electrical conductivity. We are saying covalent bonds or substances that have covalent bonds, all of them are non-conductors. That means they are not going to allow electric current to flow through them except the graphite. So graphite is the only non-metal which will conduct electricity and the reason is due to the presence of the localized electron in this structure. When we are talking about ionic bonding or ionic Combos, we are saying in solid form they will not conduct, but when they're in aqua solution or when they're in molten state, they will conduct. And the reason is that when they're in solid form, we said the ions forming the structure are not mobile, but they occupy a fixed position within the structure. But when they're dissolved or when they're in aqua solution or in their molten state, we are saying they are having mobile electrons which will allow them to conduct heated electricity. Metallic bonds they conduct heat and electricity because of the presence of the localized electrons in their metallic structure next let's go to the thermal conductivity it's just one and the same so thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity they are just one and the same we go to the melting and boiling bonds when we are talking about covalent bonds we are going to categorize into two the ones with molecular substance they are going to have low melting and boiling bonds but if they're having giant covalent or giant atomic structure, they're going to have high melting and also boiling bonds, like for example, diamond and graphite and also silicon peroxide. When we're talking about ionic compounds, they're having high melting and also boiling bonds. When we're talking about metallic bonds, we're saying they're also having high melting and boiling bonds because ionic bonds and also metallic bonds are strong, are strong bonds. So for them to be broken down it requires a lot of heat energy to be broken 
But when we're talking about confining the bones, it is its structure is what matters. So if it's having molecular structure, it's having low melting and bonding bonds. But if it's having giant covalent or giant atomic, it's going to have high melting and also bonding bonds. Then lastly, we're going to go and see solubility in water. We're seeing covalent bonds. Generally, they are insoluble in water. But some, they dissolve in water, and that's due to the presence of hydrogen bonding. Then when we're talking about ionic bonds, we're saying they are generally soluble in water. When we're talking about metallic bonds, we're saying some metals dissolve in water. Planners, that's the end of our class today. Thank you for watching.